Okay guys, so we're on a roll. <laughs> so we're like, baby's eyes are open, but let's knock another one out of the park. And the one that we want to do for you guys right now, we feel is a really important one because it's a very sensitive one. It's a very sensitive. So I actually think that this probably happens with most people at one time or another within their life, where you come across the feeling because I'm going to say sometimes it's a feeling of sexual rejection. It doesn't necessarily mean it is, yeah. but it's a feeling that you've got that sexual rejection. So uh, we felt, felt it was just vital to bring this up today in topic. Um, and yeah, okay, take it away, girl. Well, I find it's interesting that it happens a lot in relationships. It doesn't matter how long you've been together, at one point or the another, you will experience some sort of rejection sexually. Nothing personal mm -hmm. most of the time. It's not personal. However, we take it very personal. Oh, I know I used to. Whoa. I used to get shitty ass. And I think it's something we need to openly talk about and share on how to do with, you know, the sexual rejection. So first of all, first of all, why it happens. Okay. I find that there's numerous reasons, <coughs> you know, Someone, you know, say for example, I I know in my relationship, sometimes you're tired, you're low on libido, uh, you've low got libido, work to, yep. yeah, you've got work tomorrow, yep. um, you're not in the mood, you're stressed out, you're stressed out, uh, your husband's not doing the housework, mm -hmm. so you get pissed, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> um, or you sleep deprived. Yes. Yep. So, but then the question is, why does it happen over and over and over again? That's if it's happening over and over again. Or you're talking yeah. about with the same person or throughout your life? Well, I believe that in relationship, it happens mm -hmm. once or twice, yeah. every now and then, that's normal. Yeah. But it happens over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Then there needs to be a discussion around why. Yeah. Because I believe that a lack of sex or sexless marriage is never an overnight thing. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and because you will. You get to a stage where some people are, um, they do come to us and they're going, I'm not, I, well, actually, we had one guy that hadn't had it for a month, was it? Yeah. Um, and I actually didn't think that was so bad because it was only a month. Um, but if this has gone, I, I mean, I know somebody who was two years, five years, 10 years, um, and there's no intimacy. So, you know, you want to talk about rejection. This person actually did ask, you know, are you seeing somebody else? And the response was no. Um, but in saying that, you know, it's like, you, a real relationship with somebody has to have some sort of intimacy connected to it, and there was none. And that's when I really see it as a problem. You know, because we're talking about, it's a long-term thing, Whereas if you've just been rejected a couple of times because of some of the, those reasons, you know, I've just done a 16 hour shift and I just don't believe that I can pull one out of the park <laughs> at this time or it's not highest on my values list right now, that you go, okay, if it's one or twice, but if we've got this consistently happening, that it is a, something that started a long time ago and it's more than just an intimacy issue. And I think you need to stop telling yourself why that is what the relationship's supposed to be. Yeah. Because over time, when you've been together for so long and you have so much of the rejection, you keep telling yourself like, that, oh, this is what my relationship is supposed to be. As long as we have the companionship, yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah, oh my God, now that's the 10 years that I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, we're good friends. Oh, that's nice. Well, you can... Oh, we're good friends. So, should we move in together and sleep in the same bed but never, ever, ever no. touch? I don't think so. But I think, you know, when you move from the stage of when you used to be sexual, yes. and you used to be intimate and connected, and now you're no longer in that state anymore, something happened. And unless you address the issue, yeah. your sex life's not going to change. Yeah. And if you're someone who is happy with that, that you're in a relationship with someone, but you're not gonna be ever, ever have that intimacy, go for it. Yeah. But for those who want to move 
parts to this. You know, I think number one thing is stop telling yourself lies. <laughs> stop bullshitting to yourself. Well, because yeah. honesty in itself is powerful. Because yeah. unless we address the issue, you're not going to resolve the issue. Yes. And second of all, you know, talk to the other person. And I think because we talk about sexual rejection, it's not just about sexually rejected. It's as a personal rejection. And then that's an ego thing. It is. It's very much an ego thing. Like I used to be more physically wanting um, <laughs> than my partner. So I was the one always poking in the back. And for me, I actually connected through intimacy. Because I used to say, this is the one thing that I do with you that I don't do with anybody else. It's and, not just about sex though. I think and that's that was a, a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and you know, for me, like when he was too tired or whatever, you know, I took it personally and it was a real ego bruise. So I understand when it happens to a guy. because um, I think it is probably more common the other way around. Mind you, these days a lot of women are wanting it, men are rejecting. And I think when yeah. a lot of men experience sexual rejection is because the women believe that men only want sex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a myth. Because one men want love. Oh my god, I think they want it more than women. Yeah, they want cuddles too. Oh, they love their cuddles, yeah. And they want intimacy as well. Yeah. Sex is just a part of it. Yeah, it is. It is. And that's where we're getting it all mixed up. Yeah, because we then we'll, we'll let our brains, the monkey, they call it the monkey brain, start off and you're going, well, if you're not doing it with me, then who are you doing it with? You know what? They're doing it with nobody else. But then if you don't experience that in your relationship, then why are you in the relationship? Yes. I, I could not be in a relationship with no intimacy because to me it's a friendship. Yeah. And I'm, I can be a friend with anybody, but to be intimate with somebody, uh, I believe that's why we're here. Yeah, I, I believe agree. that's why we're on earth is to have relationships and connection. And there's connection, but there's, this is a connection on another level with somebody. You know, on a one-on-one -on -one level, you know, um, when you're bringing that intimacy into it, it doesn't get any better than that, guys. You know, that's the beauty of why we're here. So um, let's talk yeah. about how to deal with sexual rejection. Okay. In a, in a healthy way, in not healthy. the ways I used to do, yes. Um, <laughs> so first of all, I believe to stop telling yourself lie. Yep. Number two is that having that conversation with the person you want to have that intimacy with. Because for women, I believe, women connect through emotional first before yes. they connect sexually. Yeah. So you don't just go and poke at the back, actually go backwards and look at where is the gap in your relationship. Because I'm, I guarantee you there's a gap. Yeah. And unless you close that gap, it's not going to happen. What could the gap look like, just so they've got a quick idea? It depends on you know what issue really is in their relationship. Majority of the time, a lack of sex is a result of a lack of trust. Whoa, that's a big word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So if your person, well, the thing about being intimate with someone requires a lot of vulnerability. Yes. And if you no longer trust your partner, then how can you be intimate and yeah. vulnerable? Yeah. So Bingo. Trust is a big, massive thing. It's a foundation for every relationship. And when you know you talk about how the person say but say they're gonna do something but they're not gonna do it, little things day by day actually it affect the trust. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I tend to push someone away, and that pushing somebody away is I'm not trusting you because you're not doing what you say. So then I do the rejection thing. Yeah, Before, and now I'm conscious I'm doing that because yeah. I was doing that unconsciously. Yeah, and I see for a lot of women as well. When they feel like the man is not stepping up, yep. then how can you trust someone if they're not stepping up for you? If they're not fighting for you, how can you trust them? And here it is. Wow, yeah, the whole fighting for you. It's a huge one, guys. That's um we do look as women we do tend to do little tests all the time, but yeah, that's that's a big one. Yeah. Um and I, I believe that unless you address these issues, it's not gonna work. And I'm saying sometimes it happens. Shit happens.
happens, we're busy. <laughs> So don't take it personally. Yes, I think that's a big one too. Don't try not to take it personally when someone just goes, look, I, I just can't right now, or not tonight, or I'm not in the right frame of mind. Because you know what? If you're not in the right frame of mind, it, it becomes a chore. And when it becomes a chore, your relationship starts to go downhill very quickly because the last thing you want to do is something that becomes... How do you like it when the household chores are a chore? Yeah. Do you enjoy that? No. How many people go, oh, goody, I'm getting to go back in the carpet today. I was so excited. Well, I don't know about you, but no. Some people yeah. don't. <laughs> well, that's the ones that with the, was the OCD or whatever, like to clean. But generally speaking, if something becomes a chore, you don't want to do it. So if it gets to a stage where intimacy starts to feel like a chore, the last thing that your partner's going to want to do is do that. So I would suggest... If you're a guy and your partner is not in the mood, yep. ask the question, how can I help you? Because you may be surprised that sometimes doing the dishes, taking out the bins, put the kids in the bar. Oh my God, that's so sexy. <laughs> it's, it's just what it takes for women to feel relaxed. In fact, uh, you know what, I'm gonna challenge those of you out there to go and do that to whoever is the um, caretaker. Yes, that's true. Unspoken tests that need to be worked out telepathically are a real bastard of pass. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We're not mind readers. So it's about communication is massive. So for those of you that do have a partner and you do have children, for example, that's your challenge. So your challenge is, you know, literally to go and help out around the house. Even ask your partner, what can I do for you? Because just by doing that, I guarantee you, and I'm saying change. consistently do it, um, you know, things will actually change. I think my phone just died. <laughs> so one of them we're gonna put on the other page. Um, so yeah, you know, things will definitely change, you know, it, it is just those tiny little steps, guys, that make a massive difference. One thing said of, going to bed and asking for sex, asking to give your partner a massage. Oh my God, You yes. know, and that makes such a massive difference. Oh, Full play so first before the actual. <laughs> <laughs> and the massage is part of it. We don't do it enough. No, we don't do it enough, no, no, so, I know, sad. All right, so there's some tips for you guys. Um, take it on board challenge it's your challenge for the week all right so go out there and try something different because when you do different things you get different, different outcomes yeah, exactly different results so until the next episode bye from bye. us